Good evening, church. Good evening. That was a good song. Hallelujah. I like that one. Put that one on the playlist. <laughs> all righty. Uh, Y'all noticing now, and we're, we're trying to get all the votes worked out. And when the, we're going to try to get all our announcements up here. So if you want to know what's going on, I just I just want to throw this out here. I'm not trying to be mean to anyone. I just want you, want you to know we'll try to get these announcements up here and run as long as we can. If you want to know what's going on, you need to get here early. Yeah. Okay? Four church stories. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. So, anyway, uh, good evening, church. Welcome to each and every one. Uh, Pastor has been helping me. Uh, you know, if we have visitors, we just say thank you for visiting with yeah. us. Uh, you know, not to call them out. But anyway, uh, we have maybe one or two this morning. I don't know. But, uh, anyway, things are changing. Yes. Things are changing, yes. and it, it's it's for the good. It's for the good. So uh, let's go to our Abba Father. Abba Father, once again, we just want to give you thanks, honor, and glory for, for allowing us to be here this evening to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I thank you for the changes that are coming. I thank you for the changes that we, we've seen in, in the past months and maybe a year. We thank you for those changes. And we know that there are many more coming, Father God. We're, we, we know that we're we're trying to make things uh, a little better where we can be able to get your word out in, in such a way that everyone knows uh, that you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yes. Father, as we go through this evening service, Father, I, I ask your edge of protection around us as we are here. Those that are on the way, I pray their edge of protection is round about them. Those that may need a, a healing in their body that can't make it here, Father God, I ask, or we ask, that your healing virtue go to them uh, to heal them. And let them, let them have, have and, and bring them back to you that they can have a, a testimony as what you have done for them. I thank you for the message that you have uh, placed in Pastor James's heart as we open your word with him and see what it is that you have for us to see. Amen. Amen. Father, I bind up the evil works. I render them useless and powerless. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and dwell with us this evening such as you have done with us this morning. We thank you for the mighty, mighty move of the Holy Spirit this morning. Hearts were set free. Spirits were set free. I thank you that you you are a God that wants to set us free yes. from sin and all other yes. bondages, Father God. Amen. And we ask all of this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, and we declare it by saying, Amen. 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 So be it. So, uh, with that being said, our praise and worship leader and the rest of the team. Anticipation for our groom, you know, to come down and meet our groom who's waiting for us down here. And 
You know, and nobody spares any change at all when it comes to a wedding, you know. They throw everything they got into it. They get their friends all together. You got everybody working together trying to get ready for that wedding day, right? And I'm telling you, I was talking to God when I was painting today, and I was listening to worship music, and, and you know, God says that's what we're doing right now. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for, for the groom. And I know, I know without a doubt, I know without a doubt, he's going to say, good and faithful. I know he's going to say that. I know it. So don't, don't hold anything back. We need you ready. We need the bride ready. Don't worry about the time that you put in. Don't worry about how many hours you pray. Don't worry about how many you help. Amen. Don't worry about the money you don't have. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Don't worry Amen. about it because you can serve God and be ready Hallelujah. every day and not spend a dime. Because really God, all he knows is your heart. He don't want anything else. So we need to be ready. Get that veil ready. Get that gown ready. Get it all cleaned and white and ready. Smell the flowers. Smell the flowers. Struggled for probably about the last three, four months. Begin your prayer closet. Seek God. Amen. Amen. Seek God. You don't have to run to anybody else. Just seek God. And He'll He'll reach down and He'll say, "Here, let me get you out of that rut. Let me just pull you right out of that rut. Let me show you what you need to do. Let me show you. I need you. What I need you to do is, I need you to go back there. This way, said to me, I want you to go back there and I want you to to create a pantry. Because there's going to be a time when we are need that food. Amen. Then I, I did it. I did it. Not being used a lot, but that's okay. God told me to get the pantry. It's kind of like Noah got the boat. He the rain, but he spoke. Don't worry about what everybody else says. If God tells you to come up here, and and clean the church, go clean the bathrooms, whatever. Work the nursery. Step up. Do bulletin boards. You know, I'm not the only decorator around here. I know we got talent here. We have talent here. I don't have to do the bulletin boards. You come up to me and say, Julie, can I do the bulletin board this week? That to me, that's stepping up. Absolutely. Please do. Let's see what God does with your hands. So don't be afraid to say, do you mind if I if I do it? And I've heard Brenda say, if you got a lesson, you got something you want to share, just tell me. You can do it Sunday morning. Let's prepare. Let's be the best bride we can be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good evening, children of the Most High God. Um, before we get into our lesson tonight, Pastor, forgive me. I'm going to go out on a limb here. And y'all forgive me. You might think I'm going to be a little crazy. And that's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. But truth be told, I don't care. Don, would you do me a favor, sir? Would you open up those double doors and, until they stay open on their own? Amen. And then would you do me one more favor? Could you hold open the entrance door? We're going to do a little spring cleaning before we get in the water. Okay? Y'all just bear with me. And this is very, very much active participation. Spirit of infirmity, get out. Spirit of oppression, get out. Get out. Spirit of lack. Get out. Spirit of unbelief. Get out. Spirit of weak belief. Get out. What y'all got? Come on. Come on. What y'all got? 
Uh, gross up to trouble you, corrupting many. So not only does it affect you, but I'm going to hide behind my little keyboard right here on social media. Oh, everybody know how bitter I am to somebody. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, got quiet. Because I'm big and bad when I'm hiding behind my computer screen. I can say anything I want to anybody. But let's do it face to face and see how big and bad you really are. Right? Do not allow. Do not allow that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you because it will corrupt many. It spreads. It spreads faster than COVID-19. It spreads faster than the flu. It spreads faster than the common cold. Verse 16. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless. And it was an example. Like Esau. Esau traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. How many of us you don't have to raise your hand. I don't want you to raise your hand. How many of us have traded something bad for a one-time quick fix of our flesh? That's what Esau did. He traded his birthright so he could eat. And now the man is vegetarian soon. Not that there's anything wrong with that. For those of you vegetarians out there, I'm not hating on you, okay? But I mean, at least it could have been a, I don't know, a chicken tender dinner from Son of Keskin or something, right? For a single meal. And then verse 17 says, you know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. We go off on our own little rabbit trail. God, I got this. Life is good. Thank you for blessing me so much. I really don't need you as much as I did whenever I was in trouble. And we go off on our own rabbit trail, and we get ourselves into trouble. We go, God, where's my blessing? Uh, he said, really? You were going down the right path. I can't bless you when you're on the wrong path. But I can help you get back to the right path. Okay? It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. There are going to be, listen to me, millions of people when they are standing before God Almighty are going to cry their eyes out, begging for one more chance. And when that event, when that time happens, it is too late, and all the tears in the world are not going to move God to say, well, okay, come on in, even though you're not, you, didn't, you, you don't deserve to be here. He's not going to do that. He's not he's going to say, sorry, you had your chance. Let me show you all the chances that you had. Remember this? Remember this? Remember this? Remember that little church in Belton, Texas you attended? Remember, remember the pastor giving an altar call every Sunday morning and you sat there because you were afraid of what people were going to think? Come on. Do you remember that? Come on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Depart from me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that, there's going to be a lot of tears. Verse 18. You have not come to a physical mountain, to a place of flaming fire, darkness, gloom, and whirlwind as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai. For they heard an awesome trumpet blast and a voice so terrible that they beg God to stop speaking. I don't hear God's voice. Be thankful you weren't with them around Mount, around Mount Sinai back then because you would have begged him to stop talking. Right? right? They staggered back under God's command when he said, if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Yes, but now we are we, we are encouraged to enter into his presence. We talked about for the last couple of weeks, yeah. right? Yeah. Entering into the Holy of Holies, yes. right? Yes. He wants us in there. Yeah. How many of us that have children, how much would it break your heart if your child never gave you a hug? Never in their entire life, from birth to death, 
Never hug you, not one time. Break your heart, wouldn't it? Why don't we hug God more? Amen. Why don't we enter into that holy of holies? I read this teaching this morning. It was like, oh my gosh, I've got razor blades <laughs> sticking out of my feet. She, she cut me to pieces in a good way. In a good way. Yeah, it was, it was a good thing. And Julie's sitting there going, man, I'm so glad I wore cowboy boots because this hurts. You know? We needed that. Amen. We needed that. Verse 21 says, Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that even Moses said, I am terrified and trembling. That's the God, that's how I thought God was when I was a kid. I thought God was, you know, so he says, there's God, and I'm going, don't hit me, don't spank me, don't beat me with a stick. Now I know better. Now it's like, there's God, hey, great, come on. Let me give you another one. Let's talk. What do you want from me today, man? Come on. It's your will. Let's do this. But even Moses was so terrified, so scared, that he was trembling with fear. That's the voice of God. Hmm. Verse 22. No, you have come to Mount Zion, not Mount Zion to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. When Jesus receives you in heaven, you are going to be surrounded by angels too numerous to count. All joyful, thankful that you're there. More joyous than a mother for the first time holding their newborn baby. More joyous than that. And Jesus is going to be right there in front of them. And he's going to be the first one to give you a hug. Oh, and say, welcome home, child. Amen. Glad to have you here. And then the angels are, are going to be in the, right behind him just blowing up with praise that you're there. Praising God. Thanking God. Verse 23, you have come, oh, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge over all things. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven, who have now been made perfect. That's the goal, yes? That's the goal, is to be just like Jesus. We ought to start a new bracelet thing. You know, years ago it was WWJD, right? Yeah. How about WDJD? What did Jesus do? Not what would he do. What did he do? Because if we're supposed to be more like him, shouldn't we do what he did? Man, come on. Right? Yeah, that's right? Don't get this and sinking in. Amen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Got goosebumps up here. Um, you have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven who have now been made perfect. Let me read that again. Who have now, yeah. not who were already perfect, yeah. but in heaven who have now yeah. come on. been made perfect. You can strive for perfection your entire life here on earth. Yeah. And the moment it happens, you're in heaven. Because only something perfect can exist in heaven. Only something sinless and perfect can exist in heaven, right? Amen. I'm not saying don't try. Right. I'm just saying keep trying. <laughs> Pastor talked about this morning, the prize, right? Yeah. Run in the race. Do a, put the blinders on and moving forward, right? That's what we're talking about here. Keep the blinders on. Keep moving forward. Yes, you're going to stumble. Yes, you're going to stub your toe. Yes. Some of us may break an ankle. Or a hip, depending on how old you are. <laughs> but <laughs> not seeing anybody out, okay? But don't let that stop you. Listen, repair the damage. How do we repair the damage? God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. 
Put that under the blood. Yes. And keep, don't take the blinders off, just keep moving forward. Right. And, the, and when you hit heaven, you're perfect. Amen. Right. Lord. Amen. You ought to get excited about that. That is awesome, right? Amen. It's awesome. Yes. And here's why. Verse 24, you have come to Jesus. Oh. My dad, you say we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. I never knew what that meant. <laughs> Until the meeting started. <laughs> and then I knew exactly what this meant, okay? You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of what? Forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. What do we know about the blood of Abel? God said, I hear his blood crying to me from the earth. I know he's been killed. That's not the kind of blood we're talking about. Right now we're talking about the blood and we sing about it. About would you take the place of this man? Yeah. He shed his blood yeah. Yeah. so that our sins are covered. Amen. 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 It doesn't mean live like hell Monday through Saturday. Come on. Put it under the blood when you walk through the door Sunday morning and then turn around and go back out and live like hell Monday through Saturday. That's not what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about making an honest, conscious effort. To lead as holy a life as you possibly can. And then when you stumble, ask for forgiveness, repent from it, put it under the blood, and move on. Amen. Now, when you cover something, hang on, i got to do a demonstration here. I'm visual, I think most of you are visual too. <laughs> this is our sins. It really isn't because this is an offering plate. There's nothing sinful about that, okay? <laughs> this is Jesus' blood. There you see the offering plate. It represents sin. When we cover it under the blood, you don't see it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right? All right? Are you walking with me? Okay. Verse 25, be careful that you do not refuse, listen, do, that you do not refuse to listen to the one, capital O, who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we, that's us now, will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. So what that basically says is that the people, if the Israelites had not listened to Moses, they would not have escaped their bondage. Mm -hmm. If we don't listen to God, we're not going to escape our bondage. Yeah, That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Okay? Right. Remember what we talked about the New Testament and the Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The New Testament is for us, but it tells us about the Old Testament, right? right? right. That's a really good example. Verse 26, when God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. Yes, it did. Not just where they were standing. It shook the earth. Earth. Come on, the earth. Okay? But now he makes another promise. Mm, we love God's promises, don't we? Here's, here's his other, another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens the heaven. also. If you want to read about that, I suggest you just take a little trip through the book of Revelation. Yeah. Just an easy read, no problem, five minutes, ten minutes, you're done, right? Okay. He says this means that all of creation, listen to this, this means that all of creation, that's not just us. All means all means all. Look up the word all in the dictionary. It means everything, all. That's it, nothing left, right? right? This means that all creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. We sing a song, or it's sung by a group called Building 429. It says, we won't be shaken. Yeah. Right. Right? right? 
So one of these unshakable things will remain that uh, that this verse is talking about. It's talking about us. Yeah. God's going to shake the earth. He's going to shake the heavens. Yeah. If you don't believe me, who survived Winter Apocalypse 2021? <laughs> Was that not shaking the earth? Right? Who has survived COVID-19? Is that not shaking the earth? Okay? Who has survived this torrential rain we've had this last yeah. week, right? Okay? You can't, but we're not shakable. Right. We're not shakable. Um, how many know that when, 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 when um, people are what's called panhandling for, well, not the panhandlers on the corner, but when they're panhandling for gold and they've got this, 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 this thing that kind of looks like our offering plates, but it's got a screen mesh on the bottom, yeah. and they'll dip a bunch of rocks and water into it, and they'll shake it, yeah. right? Yeah. So that all the sediment and dirt falls out. Yeah. And then guess what? If there's any gold, guess what's left when they're done shaking it? It's laying right there. Yeah. We're the gold. Come on. Yeah. God's Come shaking on. the earth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Verse, this will be a short message, but we got plans for after this. Uh, verse 28, I love the last two verses in this chapter. Oh, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, where is the kingdom of God? It's in us. Right? It is in us. Let us be thankful and please God by, here it comes again, worshiping Him. Oh, he's talking about praise and worship again. Until you juke, I'm going to talk about it because it's that important, okay? I'm not I'm kidding. I don't want to be throwing up. Um, by worshiping him, listen, with holy fear and awe. You know, Julie's mom, was. she shared a story with us a couple years ago. She goes, you know, I was praying to God during my, my devotional time this morning, and I said, God, do you know how awesome you are? And God said, no. God doesn't have an ego. How could he know how awesome he is? But if we tell him, God, you're so awesome! Right? And mean it. What do you think that does to God? <laughs> Joy loves me when she says that. Oh, this is awesome. Keep coming. Keep talking to me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Time for a hug. Come on. Right? But at the same time, with holy fear. Holy fear. Let's talk about holy fear for a minute. Okay. Fear can mean a couple of different things, right? right? Fear can mean, I, you know, right? I don't like spiders and snakes, as the song went, right? That, that kind of fear. Or rats, or cockroaches, or right. whatever your fear is. Roller coasters. What's roller coasters, okay? <laughs> yeah, that goes right in with the animals, though. This <laughs> is it right up there. It right right up. Up. Okay, that's fair enough. Man created something That's right. So there's that kind of fear. And there's another kind of fear that means reverence, yeah. respect, yeah. awe inspired. Oh my goodness, I'm in the presence of the God of the yeah. universe type of fear, right? That's the kind of worshiping. We're talking about that verse. Just, just the you enter in and you're, you're pushing in and something's nagging at you and and tears are streaming down your face and it's almost like you, you, you've got your, you're just about ready to part the curtain and walk in and something keeps pulling you back and you push through and you go oh my, God. Oh my goodness that's the kind of worship we're talking about. And then it's like, God, I'm here. Oh, God, I'm here. What are we doing? Right? Or better yet, you just walk in and go, Ooh. I'm just going to stay here for a minute and just bask in His glory. Right? Hmm. Verse 29 kind of sums it all up. For our God is a devouring fire. We know we've heard a gazillion times the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal calling down fire from heaven. And the fire was so intense 
that it evaporated the water around the sacrifice. It burned up the sacrifice. It burned up the wood. It burned up everything. That's the kind of devouring fire that our God is. But he's also the kind of devouring fire. Remember I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about the four elements? Earth, wind, fire, and water. One of those being fire, right? right. Fire can either destroy or it can actually do good. You ever see, you ever see what happens to a forest after a major fire when it grows back? Yes. It's thicker than it ever was. It's more lush than it ever was. It's more beautiful than it ever was, right? When we go through a fire yeah. and we come out the other side, oh, right? We're more beautiful than we were, yeah. more lush than we were, we're thicker than we were, we're thicker skin, we're, we're more like Jesus than we ever were, right? Not only that, like, uh, you know, going through the, the heat of a forge, you know, allows God to, to reshape us. Yes, like metal? Yes, yes. you heat of iron so hot yeah. that it can be reshaped. Yes. And, and created into anything yeah. you want it to be created, yeah. right? Well, you'd have to uh, melt gold to separate the impurities. Amen. Correct. And what's left is pure versus what was went in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, good. <laughs> All right. Are, are, are we on the same page here? Yes. Yes. Praise and worship was awesome this morning. Yes. The message was phenomenal this morning. Yes. The after message was incredible this morning. Pastor, I don't know, but I think they're starting to get it. I think they're starting to get it. Praise and worship tonight was incredible. That video behind that Jeremy Camp song, if that doesn't make you ball like a baby, you need prayer. I mean, it's just... Oh. Just to see what he went through for us. Yes. And then the song says, would you take his place? Yeah. How many of us would take his place? Right, come on. Preach it. Yes, 100 people. You're probably going to get 99 to say, no. Probably. Right around there. So that's why I asked, would you take the place of this man, right? So again, a call to listen to God. If you don't hear God, change your radio station. Okay? Change the frequency. Because we have no problem here in Satan. If anybody says in their life they've never heard or listened to Satan, we need to pray for you because you have. I'm pretty sure. Every one of us has heard Satan. We know his voice, don't we? Change the frequency. To WGOD. Okay? And listen. And if you, it, it may take a while. That's why, to piggyback on what Brenda was teaching this morning, you got to spend time with him, okay? And to piggyback on Julie from a couple of weeks ago, you gotta, you got to leave the flesh behind, get through the emotion, and then get into the Holy of Holies. So if you spend time with him, with him, I promise you, you're going to hear what he says eventually. I promise you. Because God is good enough that he might just talk a little bit louder in the beginning. Amen. Especially if you're hard of hearing. Yeah. I could go with, no, I'm not going to go anywhere with that. <laughs> especially if you're hard of hearing. And then he'll, gen, he'll, he'll just gradually turn the volume down as you learn to hear his Amen. voice. Okay? Amen. So again, work at living in peace with everyone. Okay? <sighs> If we were all the same, it would be really easy to live in peace with everyone, right? But how boring. That's like eating vanilla ice cream every day, three times a day for the rest of your life. You may love vanilla ice cream, Pastor, but I bet if you ate it three times a day, every day for the rest of your life, you'd probably grow to not like it too much, right? I don't care if it was Blue Bell or H-E-B or whatever. Even if you change brands, it's still with no ice cream, right? But the fact that we're so diverse, God only needs and God only wants one Karen. God only needs and wants one Hermes, one Angie, right? One like that. He doesn't need a room of filling somebody's name, okay? But because of that, 
That's why we have to work at living yeah. in peace yeah. with each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's why we have to work at living a holy life. Because there's a whole bunch of junk out those doors. A lot of it we just threw out. Yeah. Right? And it's not allowed back in. But there's a whole lot of junk outside those doors that is just calling for your time and your attention. That's why you need the armor of God. Right. Study Ephesians 6. Right. I mean, really study it. And if you don't know what the armor looks like, do a Google search for uh, a knight back in the 13th century or whatever and see how, what it looks like. There's three pieces of it right there. Right. Yes. Okay? See what the armor would visualize it. Okay? Work at living a holy life. I'll tell you, I'll put it to you this way. If you work at living a holy life, it's easier to work at uh, the living peacefully with each other. Yeah. Yeah. True? It is, absolutely. Now, if you try doing it the other way around, <laughs> you will struggle, okay? Work at living the holy life first. And you can just see what happens. And again, if you stumble, so what? So what? <laughs> Pick yourself up. Here's, here's the person that's not going to go to heaven. The Christian. Ready? It's the one that stumbles and doesn't get up that last time. Get up and dust yourself off and say, God, I am sorry. Please forgive me. I put that under the blood. Let's go. And God's going to say, that's my boy. That's my girl. Come on. Come on. 